Is there any benefit to being anonymous online in 2024? Or does online anonymity do more harm than good? That's what I want to talk today and it might turn out to be another unpopular opinion. As you can see, I'm double mic today because we're also recording not just a video, but I'm recording audio for the podcast as well. So you can pick that up at Just the Post with Paul O'Flaherty. And you can pick that up anywhere. We're on everything. Um, so I've got my water and I've got my caffeine. So let's get into this. It's funny how this started. I recently posted an image to my Threads account of my purple Xbox controller and the mouse that I use, calling them my weapons of choice for work and play. Innocently enough, somebody asked me how my mouse, a Microsoft Surface Mobile mouse, compares to the Microsoft Arc, and I explained that it just didn't feel right in my hand. My reply led to them saying that I must have arthritis or something else wrong with my hand and then limiting replies so that I couldn't reply to them. I'm not sure what to think of this or what to call this behavior. I find myself wondering just how insecure somebody must be to make a statement like that, which in itself is relatively benign, but then feel the need to make sure that I can't respond to them. I guess hearing that the product they like isn't universally adored is more than their tiny psyche can handle. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. I don't have arthritis or anything else wrong with my nearly 46-year-old hands. These ambidextrous wanking machines function absolutely perfectly. And that's one of the things that I like about the Microsoft Mobile Mouse. It's perfect for ambidextrous people, good for lefties and righties. So no matter which hand you want to use while you're spanking the monkey, this mouse will perform. Now there's an endorsement. On a more serious note, this interaction got me thinking about how we give users the ability to control speech online while offering them anonymity. In this case, Threads gives users the ability to saunter anonymously onto another person's post, drop an insult or a comment or an insane theory, then limit replies so the owner of the thread can't reply. This leaves the poster with only two options, hide the comment for everyone or block the user. That's hardly ideal or conducive to rich discourse. It's 2024 and I find myself asking, should anyone be anonymous on social media anymore? And why do we give people the anonymity and the tools to be assholes online? I've been around since the beginning, since before social media as we know it was even a thing. I watched the Arab Spring unfold, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy the collective attention of the world, the Me Too movement, and so many other cultural events organized, promoted, and propped up by social media. I've heard all the arguments for anonymity on social media. From protecting minorities, to protecting the identities of people with abusive spouses and partners, to protecting people from governments interfering with their free speech and speaking to the abuse of power, and more. They're all really good, really compelling, really valid arguments. But are they really? I would argue that in 2024, anonymity on social media causes more harm than any good it might do. Let's not kid ourselves here. People's lives are so interconnected online that almost anyone with an hour to spare and half decent Googling skills can track down and know almost everything about anyone. Don't believe me? Tell any married woman that her spouse has been cheating on her and see just how fast she digs up the details of every account their spouse has ever interacted with, anonymous or not. Now imagine what a government can do with a court order. And a lot of times they don't even need that. A request from law enforcement is enough to compel social media companies to hand over user data. We're not even talking about employing any effort. So while social media anonymity might present a veneer of security, it's really just that, a thin, flaky veneer. Scratch the top layer and it all crumbles. Which brings me back to why allowing anonymity on social media causes more harm than good. 
When I wrote about forced anonymity online way back in March of 2011, I came to the conclusion that compelling everyone to operate under their real name would create a new kind of anonymity, characterized by being hidden under the veil of social conformity, and that would be a bad thing. I was wrong. Social conformity is the thing that makes societies work. Yes, you have outliers, and yes, you have rebels, and they can push the system forward and make changes that make things better, but overall, society works because we all agree to laws, rules, modes of behavior, and other things that are acceptable to us as a collective. The collective citizenry must live, work, play, and thrive. And in the real world, in real society, anonymity, with a few exceptions, is generally seen as unacceptable, as the antithesis of civilized behavior. It's cloak and dagger shit, and that never ends well. Today, the only people that get anything from anonymity on social media are the assholes, the racists, the homophobes, the th trans haters, the bigots, the collective anal leakage of humanity. You get my drift. They get a sense of empowerment because they grab that anonymity and hold it close to them like a Nazi flag security blanket that makes them feel enabled, entitled, and safe to spout their hate and vitriol. Worse, their collective feeling of empowerment trickles upwards, one of the few times they'll admit anything does, emboldening the Musks, Tates, Rowlings, and other hate mongers, which then creates an increasingly dangerous cycle as their fame encourages even more anonymous cretins. It's the perceived anonymity that platforms the circle jerk and grants it a veneer of legitimacy. And what foul acts hasn't social media encouraged or enabled? How many has it helped radicalize? How many has it bullied? How many has it killed? How many will it kill? Let's not kid ourselves here. The extremism, the hatred that is championed by X, Shitter, Truth Social, and others, and that leaks into every platform, isn't going away anytime soon. It's not a fad, it's not a bug, it's a feature of anonymity. And it will remain so as long as assholes can congregate, secure in their feeling, that nobody knows who they are under their pointy virtual KKK wizard hats. There's a reason your mother called you by your full name when you were in trouble. It made certain that you knew you were about to be held accountable for your behavior and you dreaded it. The announcement of your full name also served a double purpose of putting any siblings that were within earshot on notice that said behavior was unacceptable and would not be tolerated. The shock of being called out like that was usually worse than the actual punishment, as was the inevitable ribbing by your siblings. Maybe it's time to pull the hood off all social media users and call all of its citizens by their full name. Hey, this is Paulo Flaherty, and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked this video, please share it with a friend. It's the best way to support what I do. Also, please consider subscribing. It's free, and it will really help me out. Thanks again for watching.